IPEDIS is a, uh, a company interested in the complement pathways, and specifically within the complement pathways, which many of you might have heard about in the context of its role in macular degeneration. We are interested in complement factor C3, which is a component that sits centrally in the cascade, and by inhibiting that, you have an effect on all of the downstream effectors that can play a role in pathology. We don't only uh, have clinical trials active in ophthalmology, but in a wide range of indications, and uh, including some rare diseases and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And I will explain to you in a minute what ties these indications together. We have two molecules in development. The first one is called APL1. It is a small cyclic peptide with 13 amino acids linked by a disulfide bond. And then APL2, which is a long-acting version of APL1, a pegylated molecule that we use for both the intravitreal and the systemic subcutaneous dosing. So a bit about the mechanism, because we all know that complement is important, or believe that complement is important in age-related macular degeneration. And we spent a lot of time in the last decades trying to understand that better. Um, we still don't know the answer, but some, a lot of the evidence points in the direction of a role for complement in the so-called fluid phase of the disease. And I want to point out that this is something that we study not only, again, in macular degeneration, but also in COPD and some of these rare diseases like paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. And you would be surprised how much immunological similarity there is between these conditions. They're not as dissimilar as you would think. And what we believe happens is that there is a local change in the environment, uh, in, in the tissues uh, in these diseases, where uh, an initial insult leads to a dysregulation, but then subsequent to that, it, you get stuck in a vicious pattern, where antigen-presenting cells interact with T cells and create a local microenvironment in which there is recruitment of neutrophils, of macrophages that get stuck in M1 and M2 phenotypes. There's also an upregulation of polyclonal antibodies, and in that environment, complement becomes upregulated, both through the classical and through the alternative pathway of activation. And that then leads as an important signal of danger to antigen-presenting cells that maintain that microenvironment in spite of the initial stimulus that led to the phenotype being long gone. With APL2, what we aim to do is to break that cycle and to essentially resolve what underlies the condition. This is an overview of our pipeline. We currently have two proof-of-concept studies going on in paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, uh, one in combination with Solaris, one in monotherapy, and we will present that at ASH. But very importantly, we are currently running this clinical trial uh, in geographic atrophy, where we have enrolled 246 patients, and that we will read out next year in the summer. And that is what I would like to spend a little bit more time on. So I don't need to explain to this audience how geographic atrophy works, but we are specifically interested, as mentioned in some of the talks today, in reducing the atrophic growth in these patients. This is a very simplistic overview of the complement cascade. As I mentioned earlier, C3 sits centrally in that cascade, and many of you might be familiar with the, the excellent program that Genentech currently has ongoing in phase three clinical trials, testing the ability of lampalizumab which is an anti-factor D FAB inhibitor in reducing the rate uh, of atrophy. Uh, what is unique about FAB, uh, the FAB against factor D, is that it inhibits the alternative pathway of activation, which we believe plays a very important role in the disease, but does not block all of the activation that can come from the classical or the lectin pathway. So if you want to have an effect on the downstream effectors, it is important to go centrally at the stage of C3. This is a brief a very brief slide summarizing the, the intriguing data that we got from the phase two clinical trial, Mahalo, uh, using lampalizumab. And what we found there, or what Genentech found there, is that in patients that had a genotypic uh, SNP in complement factor I, which sits in the alternative pathway of the cascade, there was a reduction in growth by approximately 44%. Now, it's important to point out that in the Mahalo study, approximately half of the patients carried this SNP and that the baseline rate of progression in patients with this SNP was actually approximately 44% faster than those that did not carry the SNP. So what seemed to have happened in this trial is that lampalizumab reduced a faster rate of progression in patients that have a SNP in the alternative pathway to what seemed to be the baseline. And we will find out next year when we read out the trial, uh, uh, the phase three clinical program on lampalizumab, 
if that can be repeated. Where we want to uh, evaluate the role of C3 is on two interesting fronts. The first one is by inhibiting also the classical and the mannose binding lectin pathway. We can explore whether in the 50% of patients that did not seem to respond to lampadizumab, there is a dysregulation that takes place in, in, in the classical and, uh, classical and mannose binding lectin pathway, which C3 should be able to suppress. Secondly, in the Mahalo study, every month injections were effective, not every other month injections, and that is something that we as well want to explore. And in our clinical design, this is the study that is currently ongoing, it's called Philly, we decided to do something very similar to what Mahalo had done. Monthly injections and every other month intravitreal injections with health-sized sham groups that we can then pull together for a readout. The primary efficacy endpoint is as we've mentioned many times before today, a reduction in the growth rate as measured by autofluorescence uh, with all of the safety endpoints as well. And the current state of the trial is it is fully enrolled. So we have 246 subjects that were enrolled in this trial. Uh, the last patient to come into the study was in the middle of July and next year in September, we look forward to communicating our results with you. Thank you very much. Thank you.